Welcome to the Recipe Video Game Podcast. I am your host, The Red Knight, and today I'm going to be reacting to the most recent Indie World Showcase, and I'm going to be talking about other things as you can see right here. But yeah, let's get right into the showcase because I'm excited to see it. It happened a while ago, and you might be wondering why I'm watching it here versus on YouTube, and it's because I was playing Splatoon last night. Currently, right now, the Splatfest is happening. The Pokemon, you know, X Splatoon Splatfest, where you can uh, choose which, you know, starter you like. Grass type, fire type, water type. And, of course, I went with Team Grass because Bulbasaur is my favorite Pokemon of all time. So, I had to represent, represent. And now, it's time for some Indie World. So, let's get into it. After this, I'm definitely going to be playing some more Splatoon. So if you see me on your Switch, you know, and if you're on Team Grass, make sure you know you join the room because I'm just going to be hosting rooms all the time. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Indie World. I'm Mariko. And I'm Tyler. We're back with a showcase full of indie games. When I tell you I haven't seen a single game from this, not one. Not one. But like always with these shows, you know what I expect, right? I expect to see incredible art styles. And, I mean, it begins already. Pancakes! Some good music if this is what you actually get in the game. Why you cooking and shit? Holy crap. And I'm Sharon. We're making a cooking game called Venba, which is about an immigrant Indian mother and her family coming to Canada in the 80s. Food often acts as a bridge between assimilated children and their immigrant parents, so we wanted to use cooking as a lens to tell the story of this family as they grow and change. We often see the kids' side of cool. these stories, but as we ourselves got older, we thought telling the parents' side might make for an interesting change of perspective. And Look at the kitty! Bon appetit and enjoy the show. Mmm, something smells delicious. Grab a spoon and get a taste of this wholesome narrative cooking game. Help an Indian mother who has recently immigrated to Canada reconnect with her heritage by cooking a variety of mouth-watering South Indian dishes. It's true. Uh, even though the food is cartoony, it, it does look mouth-watering. Like, that should look delicious. lost family recipes. And bop along to a soundtrack inspired by Indian musicals. Added the oil. Start working up an appetite for Vemba. Vemba. Coming to the Nintendo Switch system next spring. Hey, Rico. Ever wanted to make Goodbye, a world. Yeah, but it's a lot harder than you might think. Just ask Kani'i and Kumade, two friends striving to find the perfect idea for their next game. Watch the oh, a Game Boy. Develop as you play through stages with the cracked screen. Puzzle platformer while following I know plenty of people can relate to that. The recent games haven't exactly been raking in profits. So both of them must work part-time jobs to make ends meet. Will their friendship be able to take the strain of these challenges? Find out when Goodbye World launches on Nintendo Switch later this, later month. this month. It's a lot of games. Oh. We've seen this recently. I forget the name of it. Oh yeah, have a nice death. The animations to this game are incredible. Like, whoever did this, they play no games. It's so cinematic looking like. That's the best way to describe it. I really should play this game. This looks right up my alley. I'm like, damn, yo, I got a lot right now. I'm trying to add even more. But you know what? I played Death Door earlier this year. It'd be dope to end the game. I mean, the year with a game, you know, of, of similar themes. They're not really similar games. Oh, once I hit roguelike, it kind of takes me out. But I still want to play it, though. So it's up to you to restore work-death balance. 
There are 70 wicked weapons and 70 weapons. That's why the animations have to be so great combos as you to differentiate to each one. Underworld. One of the perks of being death is that, well, you can't die. So use what you've learned and earned to overcome each department's vengeful minions and bosses. Damn. Reap what you sow, the lighting and all of that. Now. March 22nd, 2023. Pre-orders begin later today. 2023. Is that a panda back there? I love red pandas, man. I want that plush. I didn't even read nothing this out. I was too busy looking at the damn panda. I got a problem with pandas, man. I play Mario. I really like the last uh, action. Anything better than Red Panda. In nature and enjoying the gentle sea breeze? What about doing both of those things? What? This is so cute, yo. Did he go to sleep one time? Open world game, you have one goal. It says small Find open world game. On an isolated island oh, paradise. Look at the palm. As the retired warrior Akka explores retired warrior islands covered in majestic mountains. Dense tropical forest. Dude, the art style to this game is 10 out of 10. Spend your time here however you'd like. Nurture the island's wow. fauna, build a shelter, craft items, or feed these adorable baby dragons. Yeah, but that big one didn't look adorable. Or that should look scary. To meet mysterious characters, friendly giants, and face the ghosts of your past. Literally. Aka, December 15th. That's this year, Aka. December 15th. That game looks... Best way to describe it. Adorable. Uh -oh, who's this badass? Devolver. Oh, drilling through like galaxy. Two. Or oh, Ori. I love drill mechanics like that. That's real cool. And this art style is again perfect. Oh my lord, what the fuck? Dig, explore, grind. Whoa, controlling the mech. Yo, this game looks fire. That was just three back-to-back -back good looking games, man. That are like super up my alley because the cooking game looks good too, and I know cooking games are super popular. Yes, and so can Pepper. Pepper grind. Spicy drill wielding treasure. I love Pepper. I do though. Oh, broke the bridge on Dude, Pepper grind. Perform impressive maneuvers and solve. And that mechanic right there, I love already. Like you know the drilling, so. I'm like, I want to play this. The mech. The cannons. Donkey Kong style of it. Mm. That look like an escape mission. Oh, the flagpole. That's the end of the levels? Pepper Grinder. Damn, 2023. I'm definitely playing that game. I am definitely playing that game. I won't forget about that shit. Holy crap. Then pull up a that looks chair sick. because this coffee brewing narrative driven so visual sick, novel yo. is back for a second episode as the barista of your own late night coffee. Like I got a big ass smile across my face right now. That's how you know a game is awesome. Stories and get to know them. Like when you see it for the first time, time and it leaves such an impression. The cozy lo -fi soundtrack. Not all of your customers oh, look at her hair. You'll encounter an opera Man, pretty the way they drew that. Oh, they all look cool. And many more fantastical regulars. Experiment with ingredients to find just the right brew for each Are you serious? Dazzle them with latte art masterpieces. Latte, I'm not even mad at it. Recipes that are sure to warm their I'm not even mad at it. Yo, the character models are cool in this game. Episode 2. Coffee Talk Episode 2. On to Nintendo Switch next spring. 2023 has so many games on the Switch. What the hell is this? What is that? Is is it a like a troll or, or a orc?
the music choice is so cool the visuals to the game I mean beautiful I really like this Oni Road to be the mightiest Oni Oh, nah, I don't know. Take on the role of a vengeful demon warrior in this spirited 3D action adventure. After his defeat at the hands of a Japanese folktale hero, he has mad he stuff in this pack. Island where he joins forces Three hearts. Spirit, Ancient demons lurk but that looks like a big version of him. Lush to defeat them, you'll control Yo, the, the, the fighting looks so cool. It reminds me of Zelda. Spin attack. Wield Kuta's club to oh, Batman start jumping enemy to enemy. To draw out their spirit. But beware, some demons are invincible, leaving you with no. I said Batman style immediately thought of Kevin Conroy, yo. Can Rest Kuta in peace, man. His trials and become the most powerful demon. Begin your quest in Oni. Road to be the March 9th. When it comes to Nintendo Switch, March 9th, 2023. Sick. This is a rhythm game. Dodgeball. Collecting coins. Money for winning, I guess, dodgeball matches. Different level designs. Or, or power ups for each of the dodges. This guy teleported. Time. Maybe slows down time. Music is funky. I like it a lot. That's the memories between. From the creators mm. of Monument Valley. Monument Valley developers. Roguelite metaphorical ball game. Every night when Desta falls asleep, they enter a mysterious dream world filled with scattered memories of long forgotten I like the art. locations faces from days gone by and yes powerful orbs for playing a surreal turn-based ball game use the orbs to pull off perfect throws shoot sneak oh you got a trick shot i was about to say like, that's crazy you gotta bounce it off stuff as the night progresses and you fall deeper into a sweet slumber damn you'll unlock that new art. abilities and ways to overcome challenges you'll also meet a cast of colorful cool ass character models Brought to life with a full voice cast. I'm not sure I can keep up. Unravel your dreams when Desta. Full voice actor too. They went all out with that one. Early next year. I guess the you know the the, the original the first successful game. They can uh, do that. Get some voice love. actors. Going to the movies. Maybe the first game had voice actors. I don't know. Using supernatural mind. But that game powers. looked fully realized. Yeah. Wait, what? Yep. This slice of life pixel art game has it all. Set in 90s rural Indonesia, it follows high school. I know I say this shit a lot, but like, what else can I say? However, Look at the art. The art is amazing. Their this cat like creature in the shadow there, like, that looks sick. The animation. What are you explaining? What was that? A soccer ball or a hacky sack? I don't know. To uncover deep secrets. Can Atma and Raya face the end of the world? Find out when a space for the I like that logo launches too. on Nintendo Switch January 19th, 2023. 2023 is stacked. That's the game? Whoa! And 3D perspectives too. You know what I mean. Like different angles. Cause that could all be 2D stuff, but this is incredible. See, 3D. It feels 3D like the way it is. Dordon. Dordon? Focus Entertainment. Focus Entertainment. Um, je suis Focus Entertainment. Studio, un je ne sais quoi, et directeur artistique de Dordogne. A Play Tale. C'est l'histoire de Mimi, une jeune femme sur les traces de ses souvenirs. Publisher. Mysteriously. I'm like, I know I just saw Focus Entertainment. I'm like, that's Play Tale. Je me souviens que l'été était synonyme d'indépendance et d'exploration. A moment magic où chaque jour était la promesse d'une nouvelle aventure. Dude, that art style was crazy. And look at the art all around this man. À travers le parcours de Mimi. 
se sert d'un mélange de peinture traditionnelle et d'animation. Painting and animation. That's his, that's his art come to life, moving. It's incredible. Que vous jouiez seul ou avec votre famille. It's not even like he's making concept art. He's like, it was like he was creating actual levels. If you think about it, look at it. Ooh la la, so pretty. Meet Mimi. It's like these giant pieces and then you run them through them. Like, listen, listen, I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll never have a debate like about this. I don't care who says what. Like, I don't care what level, you know, in, in, in the field of gaming you are in. I will never agree with the opinion that video games aren't art because to me they've always been art and they've been one of the highest forms of art art on multiple levels from animating art all of it like this is insane look at the animation that i'm walking it wasn't like basic either it was fully realized like it's beautiful and keep her precious memories alive. Now, video games. You know what? If, if people want to say video games aren't art, all right, they aren't. Then they're a higher form above that. You know what I'm saying? Because it takes artists of, of different art forms to make this thing come together from sound, visuals, game design. It's all an art form, all of it. And I think it's one of the highest form of art forms on the planet today. And but that's just me. That's my opinion. Flora. No. Unearth seeds, pot them, and find their ideal habitat. Some plants will be fussy, so you'll have to think outside the box or pot to locate the right place for them. Like this is art right here, but it looks real. Like if you if you said, what does this art style lean towards? I would say, oh, it leans to more realism. And then people, oh, but it looks cartoony. Yeah, but the amount of detail, it looks real. Like it can be a real place. You know, like that art style right there was incredible. Whoa, sick crocodile costume. It's a dragon. Anyway, we better start the show if we wanna win the And then you can get something like this, right? Let's go. Where it's far more basic than anything we've seen. But you see how they, they took a, a basic art. Maybe this was the limitation of the developer or developers of the game. And they made their thing work, you know, within their you know, skill set. And put something together. And then when with the sound, with the visuals, the animation. Look at it. It looks awesome. And, perform at the Royal Theatrical Spectacle. and it's voice acting. The Royal Mouths are moving. The That's like a, a, a sock puppet. Once upon a jester. Stand down, dragon. You're no match for me. You'll never defeat me, prince. Oh, it's a film all. Hoi, we zijn Bonte Avond. A group of four musicians who are games are going to Games make. Little owl friend back there. Voice acting, improvisation with friends. Samen liedjes spelen en gewoon Doe een improvised voice acting. Denken. Je kan het ook voelen in het spel, waar vaak wat je hoort ook ons eerste take. Wow, it's the first take that they did. De spelers dit gevoel van improvisatie. That's funny, and that, that had to be fun. Acteren, zingen en dansen in ons nieuwe spel Once Upon a Jest. improv right there. Het is gevuld met zelfgemaakte liedjes, grappige personages en avonturen. We hopen dat je het leuk zal vinden. You know what? I'm joining a traveling theater troupe. <laughs> Surely you just. Nope. Musical theater rules. That's what best friends Sock and Jester are about to discover. They've devised a mischievous scheme to steal a royal diamond. Trouble is, their plan hinges on receiving an invitation to join the famous royal theater. You can see the different like gameplay mechanics Only they have the there. Best of the best get invited, so they'll have to improv their way to fame and outperform every other act they encounter on the road. Join them on their wacky, whimsical journey across a and the characters stand out. Full of silly characters and even silly like I could see this this game catching on, and those characters is always being around. So sing your heart out, crack jokes, and make the they're unique enough. Once upon a jester, jingle songs to Nintendo Switch. Oh, that's out. Uh -oh. Anyone can be a hero in this sequel to the classic roguelite game. Why does it look like Scribble Nuts? With every playthrough, whether you're a loot playing bard with vertigo or a vegan chef who fights meat, I ask why because I'm like, is that is the developer? It looks awesome though. Build up your castle and ensure your legacy. The fuck was that a skill All tree? Upgrades carry over to your heirs, and each new successor wields their own personal traits and abilities. The Nintendo Switch version also includes the Fabled Heroes update, adding a ton of new content. 
including dozens of new subclasses and items. The music sounds good from what I hear. With different play styles as you battle fierce foes, make friends, and avoid clown bites that can give you clown anthropy. Clown zombies made you a clown. You won't have to wait long to build your own. That's why I try to avoid clowns. Rogue that shit rubs off on you. Launches on Nintendo Switch later today. Nah, video games ain't art. <laughs> Look at this shit. In the co-op adventure, Blanc. This shit looks as good as Bambi. Are stranded together. It just wasn't colored in. <laughs> now they must learn. Like this looks incredible. As they trek through the vast snowy wilderness. Like if somebody said, oh, that's one of the best games I've ever seen. I wouldn't question that. I'd be like, I, I get why you would say that. Because it's such a unique thing. Look at that. Gameplay. Drop the damn. Text-free gameplay. I like that. This is a good looking game. Start your journey. Is it Blanc? Blanc. 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 Nintendo Switch as a console exclusive. February, February 14th. 14th. And they're hugging in the logo like a yin and yang. Today. Can't get enough indies? Let's take a look at Keep some more games. Keep it going. Keep it going. Nintendo Switch soon. Wrestle Quest. Oh, look at Andre. Dropkick. Wobble Dogs Console Edition. Curse is lifted. That's crazy. It's insane the, like, the amount of variety there is in video games. That's one thing. Video games never became like, you know, create, dare I say creatively bankrupt in, uh, in a lot of ways like Hollywood where it's just a lot of remakes and banking on the same franchise stuff like video games. There's just so many people making creative things, which makes the medium just second to none. You know what I mean? Nobody's trying to only be making things that they think, you know, uh, uh, will sell based off a algorithm or something like that. It's like people are making the things that they want to make in hopes that people find, you know, their creativity, their ideas. Awesome. And then something that becomes, you know, maybe something that creates a whole new genre. That was a cool way to do a trailer. Hi, I'm Hi, I'm Lucas. And I that's the kitty? It's pretty tidy around the house, don't we? Yeah, it can be so satisfying to find the right spot for things. Yeah, like I love finding the perfectly sized plastic container to fit leftovers in. That's the best. I know. This is what our game A Little to the Left is all about. Finding satisfying puzzles hidden among household objects. Yeah, it's inspired by our lives, our home, and our cat, Rookie. Rookie just gets in the way sometimes. He can't help it. He sleeps at Lucas's desk while he's working. Yeah, and I have to type between the tail switches. Yeah. So we hope you have a really good time tidying up in a little to the left. Thanks. A little to the left. Can you move this picture a bit? Yes, a bit to the left. A little bit more. That's it. Perfect. Wow, you really like things neat. Listen, I played yeah. and beat uh, after playing Unpacked. To the left. And I wasn't expecting, so I just downloaded it off Game Pass, and I enjoyed the hell out of that game. So, I, like I always say, you can't judge video games. Like if you love video games, you just gotta try shit. There's so much out there. You never know what you'll love, what you'll like. This fluffy friend has mischief on their mind, and will show up. I've played and beaten RPGs, which is a genre that I rarely play. You know, which I've played a handful of games of in my lifetime, and I find myself playing. I feel like an RPG now yes, every year because of Game Pass. I find one, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just play that. And I don't know. 
And that's it for today's indie. That's it. Is that far? Sorry to put in, but we have an update on Sports Story. Oh, Sports Story. It's all out sporting RPG. You'll rise through the ranks of the sports world. And this game has been developing for a long court, time. Tennis court and soccer field. But it's looking there like the wait is going to be worth it. In your quest for athletic excellence, raise your sporting rank to unlock even more disciplines, including BMX, mini golf, volleyball, cricket, and more. Then kick back at the mall to relax, go on quests, and explore dungeons? That's right. This dungeons. This isn't just about sports. Hop on a train or helicopter to visit goat infested... The lighting is, is and the awesome. ...and wildlands. Or pursue your other passions. Make friends with enemies, go fishing, become a detective, partake in a bit of espionage. There's so much to do. You won't have to wait long. Sports Story kicks off on the Nintendo this December. system next month. It's a nice logo, too. And that's it for today's Indie World. We hope you enjoyed the games in today's Oh, man, that Red Panda. A big thank you the to Drill our game. community and to partners. So many good games in this one. Nintendo Switch. And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow. Listen, I'm easily pleased. I love seeing awesome looking video games. You know what I'm saying? So I enjoyed the hell out of that. And I always do enjoy these indie worlds. So yeah, that was it for the indie world. And now let's talk about some video game movie news because Gears of War is actually gonna get a feature film on Netflix and an anime. And they said if these things are successful, you know. There's basically, I guess, I guess if quotas are met, they'll do more. And I hope that they do more because I really like, like the image there that you see, that's Gears, I want to say that's Gears 5. Yeah, because uh, Marcus Sun is bald, which is, and Marcus Sun is played actually by Spartacus, you know, the second Spartacus and Spartacus uh, Blood in the Sand and all that. Uh, I would love him to actually play Marcus Sun. And I know Batista is actually going to, you know, more than likely play Marcus Phoenix, which makes sense. They've been teasing this for years. You know, he's wanted it for years in the same way Henry Cavill wanted to play, you know, Geralt of Riviera in The Witcher, which he's not no more. And that's some video game, uh, you know, cinematic news. You know, he's out of there. He's back as Superman. So I guess that's going to take, you know, all his time. So he's not going to be playing Geralt no more. They're going to actually recast instead of putting a you know whole new Witcher there or something like that. But anyway, yeah, Gears of War as a movie, I think can be incredible, incredible. They just have to give it the love and care that it deserves, the budget that it definitely deserves. And here's the thing: you can do spinoffs, right? After you do, I guess the first story being like the first game, the Marcus Phoenix story, I guess you can say, and that makes sense. But then you could do spinoffs where it's just a horror story, a very intimate horror story, you know, and, and that'll be awesome. I would love to see something like that. But then I really want to get into the Kate stuff because I love Gears 5 and I would love to see that all played out. And I know people are like, hey, let the story play out. We'll get there. And I'm like, I get it. The game's got to finish. You know, we still got one more story to go. But I really do like this story and because Gears 5 is my favorite Gears game, like single player wise. Uh, I really enjoyed the story, what they were doing there, based off of what they started with 4. Because 4 left me hanging, but then come to realize after playing 5, it was like, yeah, because you wanted more, man. You wanted more. You was enjoying what they were doing. And it just felt like you were shortchanged kind of after the wait. But four, playing 4, like this year I was actually playing all the Gears of War games. And I got Hive Busters I actually left to play. But... uh. And I'll probably try to play some of the, the tactics too. But I, I will say, like, playing four and rolling right into five, that shit was an experience. You know what I'm saying? That went really well together. Now I'm really waiting for six. So I really like that story, and I would really like to see that in live action. Uh, but again, you know, people expect it to be, oh, Batista, Marcus Phoenix. Or, I don't know, like, like they just expect, you know, the characters we know. But Gears is actually known for being a series that has a lot of characters. And they can go in a different direction. They can even say, we're just going to focus on a whole set of 
original cogs, none of the cogs from the video game and, and tell the story. I don't think that's the way you go. I think you start with Marcus Phoenix. You got to start with the pillar, get it right, and then you can say, oh, we're going to do a, a crazy-ass, you know, Carmine story, and he's going to survive that story, but then you're going to meet that Carmine in the next Marcus, you know, movie, <laughs> and you know how that goes. If you play Gears of War, you know the fate of those characters. It's usually the same. So, like, you can do stuff like that, and Gears fans will love it, but you have to, the first thing has to be, I feel, Marcus Phoenix. It just has to be. So people waited for, and I've been seeing a lot of people saying like, oh, you, you know, I don't want Batista to play for whatever reason. And Batista's been killing it, you know, with all these roles. He got uh, the Knives Out sequel coming out now. The what? What is it called? The Onion one? I forget, I forget what it's called, but it's something Onion. Uh, and he already did Army of the Dead on Netflix, you know, which I thought was a banger. And showed that he can be Marcus Phoenix leading a group of goddamn cogs running around killing, killing all kinds of monsters like. I mean, he's perfect. He got the size and everything for it. Like, why not? And, yeah, I just hope that they do what Gears is known for, which is a varied cast. You know what I'm saying? Like, Santiago's a Spanish guy, obviously, Santiago, right? Uh, you got Dom. Like, There's just a bunch of characters in Gears, you know, all different walks of life, and that's what makes Gears really cool right from the start is that, they never were just, oh, you know, just one way. It was always about inclusion and shit like that. So I want them to focus on that also, you know, with the uh, movie and any of the lames out there saying, oh, it's woke. I'm going to say you never played Gears of War then if you're saying what it is is now some shit that you just picked up because of dumbass politics over the last, you know, uh, five years and shit. Uh I'm excited for it. I am excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. I try to go into all these video game movie announcements, you know, with with some kind of, you know, crossing my fingers and hoping for the best with all of them. Like, I'm looking forward. Listen, I don't play Fallout at all, but it's going to come out on Amazon. Sure, I'll watch it. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching, uh, what's it called? Periphery right now. Show is incredible. You know, uh, so I'm like, yeah, that on Amazon. Sure, why not? They're going to do God of War on amazon if i'm not mistaken i'm like of course i'm gonna watch that why not last of us like that's when i'm gonna get hbo max again when last of us comes out to watch last of us why because walking dead is one of my favorite shows of all time i love zombie shows like black summer and shit of course i'm gonna watch last of us you know what i'm saying i got paramount just to watch halo and i'm gonna always do that for video games you know what i'm saying like and that got nothing to do with uh console allegiance none of that when video games step out into other fields I want to always be there to support it, you know? Even if I take, you know, my time to get to shit because it just don't look all that appealing, I'm always hoping that they look appealing out the jump, off the jump so I can just be like, yeah, day one, I'm in there. But uh, stuff like Uncharted, I haven't watched that yet, but I will watch it eventually. I think it's on Netflix now, and I'll check that out eventually. Um, but yeah, like I like uh, seeing video game movies attempted. And hopefully, you know... Uh, with the Mario movie coming out and off the back of, you know, successful video game movies like Sonic, Detective Pikachu, like we can continue the ball rolling into good movies and all these things will help each other because if video game movies continue having the narrative of, oh, video game movies are whack. And this is after like you get Sonic 3 and Mario 1 and, you know, all, all this stuff that's in development right now, Borderlands is in development. Like there's so much shit in the Twisted Metal you know, I know Samoa Joe's going to play the clown and all that. Like, there's a lot of stuff out there being made. And if those things aren't good, yeah, they're going to hurt each other. And that's why I hope that it's all good. And they, and they can just get better and better. Look, not everything got to be perfect. Halo wasn't perfect. But there was some good in there. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, you could build off this and make a way better season. That show went through a lot from switching networks, people buying it. You know, it was a lot of shit going on with that first season. Hopefully with the second one. Based off the success from the first one, they can get an even bigger budget, higher quality, better, you know, uh, cinematographers, all of that shit, directors, all of it, you know, and just continue growing that product and making something, you know, better out of something that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, Giz, the way I look at it, I'm like, Giz, it's, it's right there. Don't try to change nothing. 
get some actors. I'm not saying they got to be big, giant diesel dudes. I mean, obviously, Batista is a big, you know, guy, but the suits got to be the big, bulky thing. Like, don't change that, please. These dudes got to look like Cog, man, and, and, and the chunk is part of Gears, and they've slimmed it down. Like, with Gears 5, I love the way the suits look with the blue and all that bouncing off it. That's what I want in live action to the T. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what I want. Obviously, it got to be some lightweight material because nobody wants fucking actors carrying goddamn 60-pound suits, you know, for goddamn 15-hour shoots and all that and action sequences and all that. They definitely got to have uh, some kind of soft, fake-ass, metal-looking thing. But it has to be chunky. It has to be Gears of War. Gears of War should look like Gears of War once you see it. Like, the first season of Gears of War should be a simple you seeing the goddamn, you know, uh, 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 your gun and the chainsaw rev. That's all you need to see. And it should tell you the quality of the whole product. Like, every fan should be like, oh, okay, we know what they're doing. You know, and that's even before you get... To see, like, oh, Marcus chainsawing a goddamn locust. No, just showing, like, the weapon picked up and then just doing that. And if it looks like the game, everybody's going to breathe a sigh of relief. It's like the Last of Us trailer. People looked at that and was, I see the game there. You know, Game Explained does comparison videos like, you see the game there. You know, I played most of that first game, and I'm like, yeah, I remember playing this. I remember, you know, them running out the house at the beginning. I'm seeing you know, all these uh, moments, and I'm like, they got it, they captured it, it's how I felt when I saw Detective Pikachu, I was like, they got it, they captured it, this is it, and in this Detective Pikachu world, I know in my heart that there's an Ash Ketchum out there, you know what I'm saying, running around, speaking of Ash, we're gonna talk about him in a second, but, you know, I felt like, yeah, like, he exists in this world, Pokemon trainers exist in this world. This is just a City Life version. This is a Detective Pikachu story. It was like they started with the spinoff before they started with the main thing. But the main thing is supposed to be happening on Netflix too. We could be having Gears of War and Netflix coming out in the same year with Witcher season. They just showed off the uh, the the Witcher the Witcher spinoff, which looks cool as hell too. Like this is a lot going on, you know, on all these different streaming platforms, and I'm looking forward to all of it. You know what I mean? I'm looking forward to a lot of great things when it comes to video game adaptions. Now, let's talk about uh, Nintendo's quarter two results real quick because, yeah, those just dropped and Nintendo Switch is now at 114.33 million sold, which is insane. Like, the, the shit is, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, yeah, so some of, the, some of the topics of discussion here that Nintendo... Shared was, and I'm going to just go through these real quick, that Nintendo forecast was uh, adjusted mainly due to adjustments of unit sales forecast for Switch hardware and exchange rate assumptions. Nintendo reduced their Switch forecast by 2 million units to 19 million units, which is still insane. Uh, Nintendo says there is a gradual improvement in semiconductor and other component supplies and a recovery trend in hardware manufacturing. Nintendo will continue working to front load production and select appropriate transportation methods in preparation for the holiday season. Nintendo says they'll work to deliver as many Switch units as possible to consumers around the world. Yeah, so I guess they their numbers was lower than expected because of that whole semiconductor situation. Everybody's facing some kind of issues, you know, PlayStation and Xbox, they've been going through it for what, two years now. That's why it feels like the generation is still just, you know, gearing up basically as we speak. Uh I mean Halo feels like now it's actually in its proper launch state. God of War just came out. You know what I'm saying? So it feels like these consoles are just now getting getting it right. And that's not saying that they didn't have other bangers, you know, previously. You know, of course they did, but it just feels like now we're getting into it, 2023, especially on the Xbox side, feels like th that's going to be really uh, uh, get you started. Yeah, when it comes to their far, like like their uh, far out first party releases becoming closer, because that's what it's been. We've been talking about these games that are mad far out, and now those first party releases are actually, you know, fairly close. We can just say that. So. Uh, yeah, let's talk about some numbers. We finally got some some full Splatoon numbers. Splatoon 3. 
is right now at 7.90 million units sold, which let's be honest, 8 million already. Crazy. That game is already about, <laughs> it, it, it's close to outselling the damn uh, prequel, the second game, which, you know, came out, some might say, at the height of the Switch hype. But it seems like, I don't know, the Switch hype just doesn't really stop, right? It just keeps going and going and going. And I mean, going. That shit ain't going nowhere. Uh, <laughs> so Nintendo Switch Sports sold 6.15 million units. Uh, Mario Strike is Battle League sold 2.17 million units. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 sold 1.72 million units. Total number of million sellers during this physical year has reached 15. And yeah, it says 95.41 million units of software have been sold in quarter two, a rise of 1.6%. So even though they're hardware, they couldn't get it out. People who own the Switch are buying games for the Switch, which makes sense. I think we've all been, you know, picking stuff up, you know, one way or another. Nintendo's been dropping content for everybody, you know what I'm saying? And next year looks no different after that damn, uh, you know, indie uh, game show. Because, like, that, the direct, like, we already know we got a lot of stuff for Fire Emblem, Zelda coming out next year. Who knows if we'll ever see Prime 4, you know, next year. There's a lot of things in the chamber, man, that, that it's exciting. Like 3D Mario, where art thou? Where art thou? <laughs> so uh, for quarter two, Switch sold 6.68 million units, and that's a drop over 19.2% year on year. And it says this is due to shortage of semiconductor and other components, which I already said. Uh, total Switch sales are at 1.14.33 million, which I said. And now let's get to updates on software which hurts me because i'm gonna just scroll down real quick nope no metroid all right we can get through we can we can go through it i don't care as much no more why they don't mention metroid man uh yo if you got a switch right and i know all of y'all listening to this already got uh metroid but if you just by chance don't have it just buy it do yourself a favor buy it you'll feel better about yourself after buying that game why because it's that good and not only that you would have made every single Metroid fan happy. And there's a lot of us, trust me. Just look at the indie world of video games. Look how many Metroidvanias are out there. You want to know why? A lot of people like Metroid, man. Way more than the sales it garners, which is a damn shame. So, yeah, do me a favor. Yes, I'm pleading with you. Go, go buy Metroid because I love it and I want more. I want more Dread in my life. I want more Primes in my life. I just want more Sam and Sam in my life. The last Metroid. You know what I mean? So, anyway... Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has sold 4 point, 4 point, you heard me, imagine, 48.41 million units, so it's about to be a 50 million seller next time we do this again, <laughs> let's be honest, it's holiday season time now, Kirby in the Forgotten Land has sold 5.27 million units, making it the best selling Kirby game of all time, well deserved because the game is goddamn incredible, Love it. Can't wait to get back to it. Animal Crossing New Horizon has sold 40.17 million units. These numbers, man. First party. I mean, just just uncomparable. This is not a first party. This is a first rave. This is a rave, bro. People going crazy. Oh, my God. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has sold 29.53 million units. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has sold 27.79 million units. And... I can't wait for it to hit 30 by the time Tears of the Kingdom come out. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield have sold 25.37 million units. Super Mario Odyssey has sold 24.40 million units. So 25 million soon, hopefully 30 before the next 3D Mario comes out. So, and, and there's been other Marios that have stepped on this game's sales. You know what I'm saying? A bit like. Uh, 3D World, which is goddamn incredible, and had Bowser's Fury, which is goddamn incredible. So, you know, people were probably picking that up, which I don't care. Love it. Mario, sales, get them all. Uh, Super Mario Party has sold 18.35 million units. Like I said, Mario, get them all. Uh, Pokemon, Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon, Shining Pearl, 14.92 million units. Dude, have I even said anything close to 10 million? Wait, let me see. Well, yeah, Kirby, but that shit just came out. It's insane. Uh, these numbers are insane. Ring Fit Adventure has sold 14.87 million units. The Wii Fit of this generation. Nintendo did it again. Did it sell as much as Wii Fit? No, 
but 15 million sales is not nothing to scoff at especially the fact that they're not selling you a balance board and and uh yeah like to me like the 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 manufacturing price versus what they sold it for i say it has to be the return has to be better than we fit i would guess in my opinion i don't know for sure but if i had to guess the balance board is a big goddamn contraption uh which i bought twice but anyway uh pokemon let's go pikachu pokemon let's go eevee has sold 14.81 million units. You know, the worst thing I did was I bought a balance board twice, but I never got a black one. And I always wanted the black one, man. The black one looks so cool. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah. That's uh, Switch, man. The absolute beast that is the Nintendo goddamn Switch. Holy crap, man. Holy crap. The, the numbers is just... Every time I see it, it's just... It's crazy. If you would have told me, like, yo, you're going to have... You know, uh, 50 million selling Mario Kart. And if you would have told me that the Mario Kart that came out on the Wii U, the worst selling Nintendo console, right? The game that I loved, and I said, this is literally top 10 best looking games ever created. And I mean, that, that, that statement is crazy to say now. Well, the great looking indie games that come out in super amazing art styles. I take it back now. Now, it's still one of my favorite looking games ever, though. Uh, and just favorite, you know, games. Uh, I would have never thought that that game would have been the one to go on. And when you count the sales of that actual game, yeah, it's over 50 million already, which is just nuts, man. Like, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like, and, and that story goes for almost all of the games that have been brought from the Wii U to the Switch. All of them being, they were successes on the, on the Wii U. Nintendo fans buy video games. That's what we do. But, to get the 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 3DS players who didn't buy into the Wii U, the ones who bought the, you know, Switch because it's a hybrid. You buy Nintendo, you gotta buy this shit. That's where you're gonna play all your shit, Pokemon, Zelda, everything. And they bought these games. You know what I'm saying? The same way they bought 3D Land and maybe not 3D World at the time. They bought Link Between Worlds, but maybe not any of the Zelda ports that were on the actual uh, Wii U. But then they all came back around for everything on Switch. You know what I'm saying? Then it was like, yeah, let me get this Breath of the Wild. Yeah, let me get this 3D where Bowser's Fury and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze and Pikmin. Like, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, man. Even though I was kicking the screen, man, I want new games. Like, to see all those games that I loved and I already had played get all those sales and, and justify, you know, my stance that Nintendo is and forever will be the greatest first-party games manufacturer this industry is going to see. At least, you know, for a long, long time. A long, long time. You know, I feel like that's not going to change. Uh, yeah, awesome, man. But anyway, let's talk about Ash Ketchum real quick. Like I said, I was going to talk about Ash Ketchum. Ash Ketchum is finally a Pokemon champion. Yes, he won. Pikachu, headbutted, a Charizard. Charizard knocked out, and Pikachu won. And I thought it was, you know, awesome the fact that it was a Pikachu versus a Charizard because I always remember the Charizard story of how hard it was for, you know, Ash to get his Charizard. Like, that was one of my favorite stories, you know, of Pokemon. And that's, you know, my generation of when I was always watching Pokemon. Like, new episodes when them shit's airing. I was there. Like, hardcore Pokemon fan, you know. I, I can't wait to get some of that back, man. And it's about to happen. We're about to talk about that in a second. But, yeah. Uh, Ash being Pokemon champion finally it only took 25 years. I don't know how old Ash is right now, but shout out to Ash, man. He did it. Now, hopefully, we can see this told in a more condensed story on Netflix live action. That's what I want. I want to Ash catch him show, not a movie, show with the budget that Pokemon deserves. You know what I'm saying? So, Pokemon looking crazy detailed, just like in Detective Pikachu. But a show, an epic journey where you're going gym to gym. And not only gym to gym, but going through things on the road with your Pokemon. Then got to go to see the nurse and all of that stuff. And meeting all your friends and stuff like that. Like, oh, Pokemon. That's going to be great. Legendaries coming in and we know, oh, they're going to do an Entei story, a Mewtwo story. Or all of it. Like, ah, damn, that's going to be fire if they do that. But yeah, that's what I want. And hopefully that can happen now that Ash, his story's not over. But Ash becoming champion 
what some people will say, yeah, this shit ain't never going to happen. You know what I'm saying? It's like the Simpsons. He's going to be doing this shit forever. They're going to be young forever. And Ash going to be chasing the dream forever. Well, no, he got it. He's champion. And they actually aired this on giant screens all over Japan. You know, like like in, in the like the main city. I'm like, all over Japan. Well, it was on TV all over. But no, in the city, you know what I'm saying? Like, And I thought that was awesome. Like, that was really cool. Because it is a big moment. It's a big deal for a generation of us. Like, it's a big deal. You know what I mean? Even being so far removed from watching the anime now, years, it still means something to me. Like, yo, he fucking did it, bro. He goddamn did it, man. I just didn't know that, you know, right when Ash did it, like, you know, my, my one of my, my, my damn uh, entertainment heroes, Kevin Conroy, man, would pass away at the, at, like, at the same time. It's just crazy. The world right now doesn't have Kevin Conroy. New Batman things are being made without him. I just keep thinking about it. It's just crazy, man. It's absolutely crazy. You know, I'm thinking about Ash, thinking about my childhood, thinking about how I used to watch, you know, Batman and Justice League Unlimited and then Pokemon and all that stuff was out and it came out and it was all intertwined, you know, with kids WB. So that shit was what I consumed, that Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, it was so much, you know what I'm saying? And Kevin Conroy, man, he was that dude, is that dude, forever that dude, the greatest Batman to ever do it, the Batman in my book. I've always said it here, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my Batman, Kevin Conroy. Bat and many... Of us Batman fans feel like that. I know I'm talking about Batman, but damn man, my dude Kevin Conroy, rest in peace. So, uh, back to talking about Pokemon. Pokemon actually is about to come out. It's coming out. What is it? The uh, 18th? The 18th? Friday, right? Uh, that's the 18th or 19th? The 18th. Yeah, and they put out a full blown launch trailer. Had the Ed Sheeran song playing throughout the whole thing. Really good trailer. And yeah, man, this is it. This is it. This is the Pokemon game that even if the mode doesn't turn out to be like the most easiest thing to use, but if you can run around like a monster hunter and you're, you know, getting these monsters because they're pocket monsters and you can run around with your friends and get these goddamn Pokemon, spend hundreds of hours running around this region with your friends on your... On your legendary cycles and all of that. Dude, this game is beyond special. The fact that it's happening now, I don't care about like visually, oh, the visuals could be better. Yeah, I've said this a thousand times. I'm not talking about the visuals no more. Done that, been there. I'm talking about what the game actually is, what it actually means to the video game world. Us wanting this, us talking about this forever. There used to be questions written into Nintendo Power about this shit. This is the dream. Like, I'm not lying. This is real. Like, this is a big deal. Like, this is a big deal in the world of video games. A massive deal. Because this is the game that will catapult Pokemon into the realms of the type of game that we wanted it to be for so long. There's not going to be no going back from this. Hopefully, cross my fingers. You know what I'm saying? Knock on what and all of that stuff. This is what's, this is what's going to push Pokemon forward and forward and forward into it being a super connected experience and us always going into oh yeah i'm getting that new pokemon you you know like i'm, I'm gonna get it oh digitally oh you getting the physical so you gotta wait so yeah i'm gonna just you know play a little bit wait for you and then you know we, we go on that adventure and it's like something that you're always gonna do together years and years and years from now you yes you who was playing at the beginning you know what i'm saying red blue yellow at the beginning when you older and you still into your pokemon and capture new pokemon you got your favorite generations and all of that stuff and you got your grandkids playing like y'all gonna be playing that shit together going through these adventures together like it's already a thing with pokemon go like people are playing this shit in real life and that's still a thing pokemon go is still popular it still makes a ton of money you know just raking in the dough so i love the fact that we're only what less than a week we're, we're less than a week away and yeah, we're gonna get an experience that is what most Pokemon fans been begging for. It's finally here on the Nintendo Switch. Such a super popular console. Awesome. Now, Somerville. I'm gonna talk about Somerville real quick. This game comes out on Tuesday. I'm gonna do everything in my power to stream this game on Tuesday. I'm going to do everything in my power to try to stream this game from beginning to end on Tuesday. One more thing about this game that I want to say. 
so far, we've got nothing. We got old ass trailers. We got the announcement trailer, which was just the logo with the old trailer within the actual letters, which I love that style. I've done that before. So, you know, I like it. But, uh, man, the fact that this game is, what, basically two days away. Nobody knows where the review copies were sent out. Nobody knows if anyone is playing this game currently. My hope, I'm not going to lie, and I know Jump Ship is a new developer, but these are folks who Jump Ship from Play Dead, Limbo, Inside. So this has been one of my most hyped games because I've been saying the minds that created those games, I've been waiting for their next thing. And I'm blessed to have three different experiences coming from developers formerly from play dead so i got play deads i got uh jump ship and then there's this other game that's coming out with this like i forget i forget i forget how to describe but i gotta remember the name of that game but i remember the game so when it does come out i'm gonna be the one like yo look at this is it this is it this is it you know reminding y'all but um my point is i've been wanting this for so long so if this game actually came out and this is a game that we don't know a lot about it looks like there's this alien war going on there's a family there's a dog there's a you know there's a father there's a mother there's a there's a child and there's a dog it's you know your perfect family but there's an alien attack going on around them that's all that we really have taken from the teaser trailers that we've seen if nobody's playing this game right now and they just put this shit out into the world game pass where you don't even need to you know pay for the game other than pay for your subscription right play this game and it turns out to be just as good if not better and i believe it will be i hope it will be you know i really do i always want the next thing to be better than the previous thing better than limbo better than inside that means this game will be a game of the year contender and it came out and we all get to play it fresh and experience at the same time and then talk about it either that day or the next day like yo what the fuck did i just play what do you think this mean that man da, 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 and people streaming it and i think that's going to be so cool so cool and if anybody could get away with doing it is this set of developers who made limbo and inside those games are so cool so intriguing you know i love those when i say i love those, i love those games i own those games on pc on steam i own those games on uh well limbo i owned on 360 so i still own that right and inside i own on on you know series and all that i own all those games on series and i bought those games Again, on Switch earlier this year. Haven't even touched them yet, but I'm going to run through them again. Probably after, you know, and I'll probably stream those after I play uh, Somerville just for fun. Like, dude, I'm excited. I'm excited for this upcoming week of video games because I think it is a big week for me as, as a person who's been dying to jump back into a Pokemon game. Like, if you don't know, I haven't played a Pokemon game since Pokemon Silver. I played that shit on my console. You know, on my 64 with the pack in Pokemon Stadium, what was it, one or two? It might have been two. Um, yeah, like, I think it was one, actually. I don't remember. But anyway, like, I've been dying for a Pokemon experience that I feel like moved the needle enough into the realm of where I wanted it to be. And I feel like this is it. And look at this image that I got up right here. Like, if that's four of us running around. It's going to be great. You got diversity right there. But look at the image, like the art. Like even if you want to like talk about the graphs or whatever, whatever, the art styles, the character models and everything. I love that you're going to be able to create your characters and everything. They resemble, look at Ash right there from the recent episode where he just became champion. They resemble Pokemon. It looks like Pokemon. It's everything that I like about Pokemon right there visualizing the world that's open like Breath of the Wild, Monster Hunter. Those are two game series that are super, you know, dope. Like I always enjoy Monster Hunter when I, when I play them. I just don't play them enough. And obviously Zelda is, you know, easily, you know, the GOAT. Let's be honest here. So anyway, like, it's just an exciting time for video games. But it's been this way for years already, man. Like, years. I, I saw some other numbers. Like, like Nintendo sold 70, 70, 70, 70, 77 million Amiibos. And I was like, yo, that's absolutely crazy. Like, you do the math on that, that got to be over a billion. You know, I know they pay, you know, uh, you know, stores and things like that. Obviously, they they have to split costs and stuff like that. But still, a billion dollars in revenue made from Amiibo, something that started in again Nintendo's 
failed gener generation, like people like to call it. I don't call it the failed generation. I call it the learning experience, where the one tweak from making the damn Wii U fully portable changed everything. It, was, it just needed that one tweak, you know? Iwata knew it. Iwata had the idea. He knew. But sometimes you got to you gotta have, you know, uh, 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 certain things before you get to the Wii remote. Like, you needed Kirby Tilt and Tumble. You know what I'm saying? Before you could get to the Wii remote. That's just the reality of it all. But anyway, that's going to do it for me. That's going to do it for this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the indie world as much as I did. And I hope you're looking forward to Gears. You know, I, I hope you enjoy seeing Nintendo continue to be successful. I hope you're happy that goddamn Ash Ketchum is champion. I hope you're looking forward to Pokemon coming this week. And I hope you're super intrigued. If you're not, I hope I and my hype has you super intrigued to play Somerville. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Somerville, again, is going to be in Game Pass. So if you want to play this on your phone, this is the perfect experience that you can play on your phone through the cloud. If you don't even got a Game Pass, just do it, yo. I promise you, you're going to enjoy yourself. And you'll find other stuff to play there too. You know what I'm saying? And remember, if you got Pro Controllers connected to the goddamn PC, you can always also play Game Pass on your PC through the cloud, even if your PC ain't strong enough. So you can play this. You got no excuse, man. Play some of L. Play some of L. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everybody who supports on Patreon. If you're watching this, on the replay, if you're watching this on YouTube, just know that I do these every single week on Patreon. There's a link in the description. You can join, become a member, and yeah, that's it for me. Until the next one, peace.